Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to show you how I've painted up my Mentos Legion Space Marines. These guys were a Bits Box Rescue. I got them a little while ago, uh, for second hand, from a trading group. And I only bought them because I actually wanted the weapons. And I threw the guys in the box. And I left them there for a while. And this is what they look like. Just some Ultramarines. They weren't badly painted. But I decided to pull them apart and turn them into Mentors. So first of all, I had to get all the arms off the models. Now these arms are the ones that I'd actually stuck on because I took the multi melters off. The whole reason I bought the Enum was for the multi melters. I stuck these arms on, I had the intention of building and painting them, and then realised that actually I need to have them all apart to be able to paint my the colour scheme that I've chosen. So I started these guys by drilling out the barrels. As you can see here, my camera was recording the wrong way around. I can't change it, so this is how it ends up in the video. But anyway, I drilled the, the barrels. The, the, this is because of some feedback I got on some models that I had previously from a friend of mine. He, uh, he likes to drill out his, his barrels, so this is for Gav. After drilling them out and cutting off all the arms, the guys were ready just to spray up. So I used Corax white spray, and this is what I was left with. The first stage is to cover them in contrast dark angel green mixed with a little bit of contrast medium. And this is for all of the dark green areas, so the chest plates, the helmets, and the backpacks. And you've kind of got to be careful when you're going around with this because you don't want to get any of the green onto the white, especially with these rims and the shoulder pads here. You want to keep the white in the rim and the white on the arm and with the contrast being really thin you've got to take your time with them, you've got to be quite careful. You can't just slosh them on with a big brush, you've got to use thin brushes and be nice and controlled. Once all the green was done I was ready to move on to the next stage which was dry brushing the green. So this is Niblet Green, it's a dry paint from Games Workshop. And I'm using the Artisopi brushes, which are really good. And I'm just going around all the areas of green in light passes, slowly building up the highlights. Again, I don't want my brush wet. I don't want to just paint it on. I want to build up. Gradually building up the colour. Doing less is always better because you can put more and more layers on. It's harder to take a layer off. Inevitably, what happens is you'll get it on the white. You just can't help it. The dry brush itself is huge, it's quite a messy technique, but it's quicker. It's quicker than line highlights and everything. So once you've done that, you've got to go all these parts here, all these parts where you've got kind of overspill from the dry brush onto the white, it kind of gets this minty green look. You've got to go over that again, because there's no point in keeping it there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take Ulthar and Grey, which is actually an off-white, and I'm going to paint all of these areas again just to give them the white colour back so when later on when I start to work on the white paint or the white armour I don't have green bits it gets it all nice and tidy and this stage can take quite a long time depending on how much mess you've made with the green you're never going to be able to do the dry brushing technique and not get it on the white, so take your time, go around the whole model, find all the areas where you've got overspill or overbrush, and neaten it up with a couple of thin layers before moving on to the next stage, which is going to be using apothecary white to shade all the white areas. So here, I pick one armor panel at a time, and I work my way around and I paint all over that one armor panel, move on to the next, and then on to the next. Again, I'm still trying to be neat because I don't want to get this onto the green. So especially in this situation here, just like I was being careful with the green earlier on, not to get it on the white, I'm now being careful with the white to not get it onto the green. My camera flipped when I was recording this bit and I didn't realize it. The next stage is to dry brush with peroxy white over all of the white areas. So there's another dry 
brush, another dry paint from Games Workshop. This time I'm using a slightly smaller brush. And I'm just trying to catch all the raised areas on the knees, on the arms, on the bits on the shoulder pads, around the round bits, just to give it a little bit of a highlight, just where light would be catching. But again, very careful, try not to get it on the green. If you do get on the green, it's not so bad. It's easier to, to fix the mistakes if the white gets onto the green rather than the green getting onto the white. Next up, once the highlight of the white was done, I took Flesh Terror's red, and this is for the ropes and the chest eagles, because these guys are veterans, and the veterans in my army have red chest eagles. The standard tactical marines and non-veteran units have yellow. I'll do them in a different video. So I'm using this as a as a base colour reel, really. I'm going to shade it, I'm going to highlight it, much in the same way as you would with any other paint. Contrasts are designed to do the, the basing and the shading and the highlighting all in one, but they're also just really good to use as a base paint and shade it and highlight it in the traditional manner. So again, being careful, you don't want to get this red onto the white. It would be a nightmare to try and clean it off. I've switched marines here. I was working on a unit of five marines at a time in this video, so I'm, I'm, I end up painting up a whole squad. But go around, all the marines, picking out all the areas you can that are supposed to be red. Again, just make sure that you're being really careful. But when that was drying, I went on to the Black Templars, and this is for all of the little thin areas, all the little. The bottom, what is that? I don't know if it's rubber, I don't know what that is, but it's the, the backs of the knees. The sort of the inner parts of the marine's armor, all the flexible parts. There you go, the flexible parts of the armor, and the exhaust on the backpack. So the reason why I've switched over to the black when I haven't finished the red yet is it's just about staying busy. When that red's drying, I may as well go on and paint another part rather than sitting there literally watching paint dry. It's always better to to keep going and you can stay busy. If you've only got a couple of days or one or two evenings a week to get some painting done. You don't want half your time to be spent watching the paint layer that you've just done drying. You may as well move on to the next part. Bit of a bad camera angle here, so I lift it up. But there you go. And then I'm back down. Painting on camera is not as easy as it looks. At the same time, I'm going to do all the black areas on the Balkans. So the, the armour of the Balkans is going to be black. Cover the whole thing in black paint. Again, later on, I'm going to highlight this up. And I'm going to add some silver to it, add some highlights to it, but we're just using this as a base coat at the minute. So next, I'm going to take regular and flesh shade, and I'm going to shade down all of the red areas. So I'm painting this into the deeper recesses. I'm trying not to get it on the raised areas. There's no need for it to be there. They're all gonna be highlighted soon anyway. So I'm just painting this into all the deeper areas, onto the chest eagles, and anywhere, anywhere that's got a ridge that I want some shadow to sit in. Once all that shading is down, next I'm gonna take some Wazdaka red, and then paint all of the raised areas of the red. So this is the highlighting stage. I'm only doing a base, one shade, one highlight. This isn't going to win any golden demon competitions. It's not designed to, to win a best painted. It's it's designed to just get it done. So I've got a painted army to play with. So why Mentor's Legion? Well, I always wanted to do Marines, uh, but I could never actually stick to an army. I didn't know, every time a, a new unit came out, every time a new codex came out, I thought, oh that's cool, I want to do that one. Oh that's cool, I want to do that one. So the choice was do every single Space Marine army that comes out, uh, and that would cost a lot of money and take more time than I've got, uh, or try and find something that can fit into all of them. So, whilst well, looking around the, sort of, the, not the main four chapters, I came across these guys. Now these guys have been in the history and games workshop way back since second edition. There's some really old artwork with these guys in it, but they've never really had their own codex. So 
look, looking around online, I found out the way the chapter works. It's really cool, actually. They never work as one set legion. They separate themselves into other armies of the Imperium. So next up, we're going to use Screamer Pink, and this is for the Purity Seals, uh, followed by Skeleton Horde for the paper part of the Purity Seals. I usually do Purity Seals red, uh, but there's too much red on this guy. Green is another popular colour for Purity Seals, but there's too much green on this guy. So I decided for a purpley pink, which is fine. It fits, it stands out. Next use the contrast paint to go over all the cloth parts or parchment or whatever it would be. You could go one step further, you could write a little tiny writing on it, but like I've said before, this isn't going to win any golden demon, this is just here to get painted. And next, Emperor's Children is used just to give these pink beauty seals one little edge highlight, just to make them stand out a little bit. So there's still a lot of awful lot of white areas on this guy. And that's gonna get covered up in the next stage. All of these areas here, big shoulder pad, all of these areas on the knees, these little bits on the on the shoulders here, on the pummel of the sword, all these decorative bits are gonna get Retributor armor. This is a great gold. I really like this one. I've heard a lot of people talk about uh, the Vallejo golds and the Vallejo silvers. I'm going to try them out. I'm going to give them a go. So anyway, go around all of the decorative pieces, all the Imperial Eagles, all of the skulls, all of the scrolls in Retributor armor. And then I'm going to shade it with Cryptek armor gloss. So back to why I use Mentos. So the way this chapter is made up is it doesn't fight in one coherent force, like I've said. It gets separated out and it fights with other Imperial forces. Ultramarines, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, Astro Militarum forces, you name it, they fight alongside them. Their Gene Seed, a flaw of the Gene Seed or a trait of the Gene Seed, is that they can learn things really quickly. So each one of them is a military genius. And the idea is they go and work in all of these different chapters to learn the ways of war of that particular chapter. So at any point, you can see a Mentor's unit in a Blood Angel army. Plasma coil now, and I use Technical Tesseract Glow. It's another one of those technical paints. I'm not really sure if I'm keen on it yet. It's a bit thin. Don't know if I'm using it wrong, but you know, plasma is glowy green. So I painted it glowy green. Um, I'm not sold on it yet. I'll have to play around with it a bit more. I had to give it a shade with a green Athonian camo shade because it was it was just too bright. So I shaded it down and I'm still not happy with it. I painted the end of the plasma with the Cryptek alloy, which is a really good colour. It's awesome. I'm planning on using that in my Blood Bowl team. So these guys will make up the core of any marine army that I want to do. I'll just use the special units from that army, like Deathwing or Sanguinary Guard, and I'll use the Mentors Legion as the core. That was the whole idea of using Mentors. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've got a few more coming on transports and other units for this army. So please like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. As always, I'll put the links for the paints and materials that I've used in the description. And I'll see you in the next video.